G-protein coupled receptors are one of the four main types of receptor, with the others being ligand-gated ion channels, kinase-linked receptors, and nuclear receptors. Before we get stuck in, let me tell you two fun facts about GPCORs. They are the target of over 40% of therapeutic drugs. And secondly, they helped two guys win the Nobel Prize in Chemistry last year. So let's start with the structure of G protein coupled receptors. If this is the cell membrane, and this is the outside of the cell, and this is the inside. A GPCOR starts on the outside of the cell with the N terminal. And if there is one thing you get from watching this video, I want it to be this. A G protein coupled receptor crosses the cell membrane seven times. So starting on the outside, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, landing on the inside of the cell with the C terminal. Because GPCORs cross the membrane of the cell seven times, they are also known as seven transmembrane receptors, or 7TM for short. And because they kind of snake through the membrane, they are occasionally called serpentine receptors. And because the part of the polypeptide that actually crosses the cell membrane is an alpha helix, I'm colouring them in now in green, GPCORs are also called heptahelical receptors. Now, the whole question of signal transduction is pretty much what actually happens when the ligand binds the receptor. If we look at the other main types of receptor for a moment, when a ligand binds a ligand-gated ion channel, the ion channel undergoes a conformational change and it opens. When a ligand binds a kinase-linked receptor, it too undergoes a conformational change and it starts phosphorylating because that's what kinases do, they phosphorylate. And for nuclear receptors, which are mainly found in the cytosol of the cell, when a nuclear receptor binds its ligand, it undergoes a conformational change and then it translocates to the nucleus where it changes gene expression there. Now, what happens to the GPCOR when a ligand binds to it? Like the rest of the main types of receptors, GPCORs also undergo a conformational change. No surprises there. This conformational change of the GPCOR allows for the signal to be passed on to the next molecule in the pathway for signal transduction. This molecule is a protein and you probably guessed that this protein is a G protein. Now, before I even write it down, I want to stress the fact that this conformational change of the GPCOR doesn't just allow for the activation of one G protein. This conformational change of the GPCOR allows for the activation of many, many, many G proteins. Now, because G protein coupled receptors pass on the message via the use of a messenger molecule, they are, they have another name. <laughs> this is the fifth name I'm going to give you, and I know it's a bit of a stretch, but this is actually the most important other name for GPCORs, and this name is metabotropic receptors. Metabotropic. And I think this word is most easily understood in comparison to the other name for ligand-gated ion channels, which is ionotropic receptors. Now, the way I got my head around these two words is that tropic kind of means to bring about something particular. And what is being brought about? Signal transduction. Now, how do ligand-gated ion channels bring about signal transduction? Well, they use the movement of ions, and hence we have ionotropic receptors. Now, G-protein coupled receptors, on the other hand, bring about signal transduction and I know this is pushing it a bit, but GPCORs bring about signal transduction in a kind of a more metabolic kind of way. And I know that is a stretch, but for me, metabolism kind of means like reactions and changes of molecules. And this receptor is bringing about a change in another molecule. And that's how I kind of remembered the word metabotropic as opposed to ionotropic. Metabotropic is like bringing about something in a more metabolic kind of way. So examples include adrenoreceptors, purine receptors, serotonin receptors, excluding 5-HT3, which is an ionotropic receptor, opioid receptors, and also the muscarinic acetylcholine receptor. Now there are two types of acetylcholine receptor. The muscarinic 
and the nicotinic and I confused which one was which until basically a few days ago and there is such an easy way to remember which one is which because the muscarinic acetylcholine M for muscarinic M for metabotropic the nicotinic acetyl acetylcholine receptor is the other one and the other one is an ionotropic receptor so as a side note we have the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is an example of a ligand gated ion channel whereas the muscarinic acetylcholine receptor is an example of a G protein coupled receptor and I am going to leave it at that. <laughs>